Hey everyone, it's Daniel with VintageMagic.com. Welcome back to another video of mine. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about Magic the Gathering art, collectibles, finance, um, anything of that nature, please subscribe to our channel and uh, take a look at all the playlists I have. I have lots of great videos. I think I have over uh, almost 200 videos plus, so check, take a look. All right, guys, so today's video is about um, a Magic art piece I just acquired. It's uh, called The Mannequin. By David Palumbo. Uh, I believe he likes being called Dave sometimes, but Dave, David, if David's watching this, hello, Dave. How's it going, man? Dave is a great guy. He's from Pennsylvania. He is um, the son of uh, Julie Bell, and uh, he, his brother is Anthony Palumbo, which is also a uh, Magic the Gathering artist. But more interesting enough, uh, David is actually an imaginative realism artist. And I wanted to um, kind of share with you on this because I don't think people um, understand what or are aware of imaginative realism is. And I think it's a really interesting thing because when I was introduced to it, I think uh, my first uh, time was in 2013, there was a convention called a LuxCon. And um, that's spelled I-L-L-U-X-C-O-N. And um, now they've called it I-X uh, for short. And then I think it's the 10th one running. I think it's like the 10th. Yeah, it's the 10th year anniversary, I think, this year. So it's held in uh, Reading, uh, Reading uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I think it has to do with the railroad, like the Monopoly, Reading Railroad. Remember that? Um, but uh, it's held there. At the Goggle Works, um, I went there last year. I won't be able to go this year because um, I have a child now. I gotta take care of, but I will go there next time um, with him or something. That it's a really great show. If you guys haven't gone, David does show there, and he has gallery work, um, and uh, he's just a really, really uh, interesting artist. Um, also, in the bottom of the um, this video, I'll put a link to a recent interview done by Magic Man Sam. I love Magic Man Sam's videos. I think he is um, interviews with art. His uh, kind of he calls it studies of artists and exploration is exceptional. So, uh, seeing that we're talking about David's work, this is a, a really great piece of his. So, this is the mannequin. I wanted to. Um, Share with you guys an original artwork by David Palumbo. And it is, um, you know, with David, what I've really noticed over the years is that his artwork is extremely distinctive. You know, I don't know if you guys, if you go back, go back to the original magic cards he's done, but, you know, his style is like almost like the, the paint is just, it's not perfect, right? The, the, the lines are not, they're not perfect. They're not like, you know, like a Kev Walker's where it's super tight. Um, and, you know, I think he's using an oil medium. That's probably part of it. But it's just style in general stays um, in that realm. This, by the way, is um, a color or I would call it like a black and white uh, painted sketch. Uh, he uses a preliminary prior to actually creating the original. So if you notice carefully... Um, it's very, very similar to the original, and I think um, it's kind of the way the artist um, kind of works off of this and also some other reference points. But let's look at, you know, I also wanted to give uh, David a little kudos on the packaging job. I think it's really important for you guys to see what a good artist, like, like when they ship things out to you or anybody that ships art to you, an artist takes care of their shipping. So uh, real quick, um, these are the certificate authenticities, by the way, um, you know, right here that were given for both. Um, I noticed what's really interesting with um, this uh, packaging is, well, you know, the, um, the thickness of this is about two inches and it's a pretty decent sized box. It's an oversized box. And what's important about that is it's not about just putting the artwork in with bubble and uh, bubble wrap, but it's also having this foam core. I want you guys to take a look at this. This foam core is, you know, I'd probably say about a centimeter thick. 
but it's double foam core. There's two sides, and this there's the wrap, and also there's this um, wax kind of um, archival paper that is wrapped around it first. So you have this paper, then you have the bubble, and then you have the foam core, which is really, really critical because then you double tape them on both sides. And what that does is it gives that added protection and, um, you know, shit happens, right? You know, shit happens in delivery and FedEx, UPS, or in this case, the Postal Service. And you want to make sure that your artwork that you're creating or um, you're selling to clients, if you're selling or trading artwork, it's shipped correctly. Uh, this, uh, the, the drawing, the prelim was shipped in also a foam core also. You know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times people ask me, well, you know, what's a bad example? And honestly, I don't like, you know, I don't like knocking on different artists' names, but, you know, I think they can figure themselves out um, if they, uh, you know, I think you guys can figure out if, you have, if you've had a bad experience. But typically a bad experience would look like they don't use this foam core. They just wrap it in bubble envelope or they just – um, they stuff it in a way in the box that it's not uh, layered in a way where there's no movement. And that's the key word is no movement. If um, – sorry, guys. My dog's barking too. That's kind of what's going on here. You can see one of my dogs is sleeping. The other one, Lulu, the raccoon is – not a raccoon. It's a shih tzu. It's around somewhere. But, but the whole point is that um, if – there's a lot of movement with art and even cards. You're going to have an issue with the shipping and, and stuff like that. All right. So, yeah. So, David did a, 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 a great – you know, if I was the professor at Tulare Academy, I would grade this an A. You know, it's very good. Actually, you know what? I'd probably say A minus. Um, main reason why is you can always go overkill and use those uh, master pack boxes, which I'll show you that Chris Ron or Therese Nielsen uses in the future. Um, but – um, those are pretty heavy duty overkill, but you know, anything in the A category minus, you know, uh, or plus or whatever is uh, really great. All right. So let's talk about the art because I really wanted you guys to look at something really cool here. Um, if you guys go, this is for the iconic master set, um, the mannequin. And what's really cool about this is it looks nothing like a magic card. Um, there isn't a fantasy element in my eyes to this other than the fact that, um, well, there isn't. I mean, I, I guess this little diamond thing here, um, jewel, kind of maybe is kind of fantasy. But other than that, I mean, it's an old – if you look at the old leather-bound um, toolbox kind of to make this mannequin, it's an old uh, mannequin, by the way, guys. It's kind of like what you see at like a department store, those type of things. But this is a small little mannequin toy. And you can just tell like every little detail is very old school, you know, very old and – Kind of like the old masters still life stuff, right? Have you guys seen that art where they they uh, do video they um, do paintings about like fruit or objects around their life, still life? That's why it's called that. Uh, you know, I know some other artists practice that kind of manner, and um, David really did a great job, just giving a very interesting painting. Um, I also really uh, like the craftsman feel, like. This is this is more focused on the creation of this piece of the mannequin uh, versus it being like some kind of like action scene for like a mannequin in battle or something. Um, I just like it and and I thought it was really really neat when I saw it um, as an iconic master's piece. Um, I really felt like it was just a beautiful piece of art just to have. Uh, in general, I, I actually didn't even know it was an iconic masterpiece at first. I thought it was really beautiful, uh, just the way um, – something very like interesting to talk about, right? Something conversational. So, um, I you know, it's interesting with the mannequin because I believe the mannequin, it's like a two-mana artifact and then you can tap for a colorless mana. So it has a dual use. Um, what's interesting about this is I'm, I, I wonder about this diamond thing. I'm going to have to ask David about this, like – was this in the style guide? What was the purpose of that? Um, was that kind of the mana source? I don't know. So I'll have to call him and ask him about that. And you know what? I'll put that in the notes in the video if what I hear from him about because that's interesting to know 
um, if that indeed was like a, hey, they, you know, telling the illustrator, hey, please put like a mana source or like some kind of gem. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys really like this video. Um, I'm going to, you know, when I purchase things, I always try to do videos. I do purchase cards quite a bit um, and collections, but um, with the artwork stuff, um, when I do get something in, I like to do a video for these things. So if you guys have any questions or if you're interested in David's art, again, please check out the link below of this interview by Magic Man Sam. Uh, he's a really great YouTuber and uh, he did a recent interview with David. And I think uh, if you're interested in David's art, his website, I'll put his website link below also. Um, and his website, again, if you guys want to just know in general, it's dvpalumbo.com. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are having a great week and we will talk to you guys soon. Take care.